I am feeling happy today. Much to the dismay of our audience. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Pretty Good Cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, I'm going to teach you how to make one of a, a genre of cooking, or series. A group of foods that all have a common name for them. Don't worry, don't, don't worry bowls. This will, this will be a pretty simple recipe. We're, we're going to make a um, teriyaki pork bowl. We're going to basically fry up some pork and put it on rice. It's going to be a pretty chill evening, guys. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any wild and crazy antics. Uh, might put you guys to sleep. Uh, but, you know, it's a kind of a rainy day and I'm going to drink some tea and maybe I'll fall asleep during the, the episode. Wouldn't that be fun? So uh, step number one is to get the kettle on. Doesn't this have like just a, a total same charm and appeal? I'll have you know that I pre-gamed and already had a cup of tea. I'm also gonna serve this dish with rice, so you will need some rice for this dish. But a lot of the recipes I looked at for this type of thing were like, just use leftover rice, it's fine. So I'm just gonna cook some rice. You know how to cook rice. Everyone knows how to cook rice. I got some uh, some nice short grain rice. Koku ho? Uh... When the tea's a whistling, it's time for tea. I guess that's water, not tea. I'm drinking green tea <laughs> because of the thematic continuity. Also, I like it. Now I'm putting the rice on. I'm gonna make our teriyaki sauce. I'm gonna start with soy sauce, of all the things. I'm gonna use a couple of kinds. I got supreme soy sauce, which uh, it smells almost like a, a beer. Oh shit. Wow, that's really good. It has like that aroma of you know, fermentation, it's really nice. It's almost like uh, if you've ever toured a brewery or a distillery and you're like in the grain area and you're just like, ah, it's nice. That's what it's like. I guess I could use a spoon and be less barbaric about it. I also have a uh, mushroom flavored dark soy sauce, which is used in cooking, well, I guess most, most things like that are. Sorry for the weird sounds my mouth is making. That shit is really salty. 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 Okay, we're gonna start with two tablespoons of each. Oh my lord, that was salty. And next up, we're gonna add a couple of tablespoons of rice vinegar, which comes out painfully slow, apparently. A tablespoon of sesame oil. Next up is some sake. The cheapest sake available. Who gives a shit? I'm gonna add three of those. I think this one is best served chilled. No, it says uh, pretty much everything, warm, room, or chilled is the least good way, according to the, the folks who manufacture that. Let's see if room temperature is excellent, such as it is advertised on the back of the bottle. Yeah, it's pretty good. Cheap sake is cheap sake, man. Like it all tastes the same to me. I don't have a refined sake palette. Next step, I'm gonna add some brown sugar. I think it's light brown. And I think the last thing we need to add is some ginger. I got some fresh ginger here. I reckon uh, taste would have been fine too. It's gonna be one of those weird episodes where I don't drink a whole lot, I don't complain a whole lot, and there's just really no content in the video. <laughs> this meal's not that interesting either. I'm, I'm, hope, I'm banking that uh, just the, the novelty of General feel goodness will maybe carry us a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. What's something controversial I could say? Tea is stored in my cup. Okay, I'm gonna grate some ginger. This is a device specifically for the purpose of grating ginger, and I don't think it works very well. But it works okay, I guess. So, nice amount of ginger. I guess it, it did a pretty good job. I guess I should give this, this tool more credit. Hey, tool. You did a good job on that knob. <laughs> nice knob job. <laughs> give it a mix. Give it a mix. I made some easy miso as a side dish for this that I thought would be nice. And uh, that's all I gotta say about that. We put our sauce over here, just let it hang out. And uh, I'll get to work on the rest of our dish here. I uh, got a few scallions here that I uh, have trimmed and washed, partially trimmed and washed. I'm gonna give them a chopperoonie. I'm gonna cut the white bits a little bit thick. We're gonna saute them up a little bit. And then I'm gonna reserve the green end. I'm gonna try to do a, a better job of mincing them. As I've mentioned before on the show, cutting green onions very fancily can add a lot to a dish. It can become a pretty neat garnish. I don't have really the skill or the finesse or the patience for that, so I just cut them like a crow magnum. I'm gonna get some, uh, some garnishes for this ready. Got some uh, cocktail tomatoes. Tomatoes are great. I'm just quartering those. We got like 
meat and rice with putting a little salad in between them. That's that's a little weird. Got an iceberg. It's all right. So I guess uh, I think I'm gonna go through part of it like that, and then uh, what I always see is they like very very thin. They shred it, and I'm probably gonna not do a very good job with that. Hmm. I think I'm gonna remove the core. But maybe this will will get that effect. They cut it so finely, like I don't even know how you're you're tasting the fibers. I think they've all been chopped into pieces. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like they they've shaved it or something. Close enough. Set that aside for later. So I think my last vegetable, the garlic, which I will be sautéing. So I'm really just gonna peel these. Give them a rough chop. I'm a good cooker. Just a rough chop. Big pieces are okay. We got some. Bits of iceberg there too. It's fine, <laughs> no problem. I'm gonna preheat my pan here. Nonstick might actually be preferable, but it's like the biggest pan I got, and I gotta do multiple chops. So while that's heating up, I'm gonna I'm gonna pound some meat. My tenderizer. By the uh, by the way, I just got uh, boneless pork loin chops. It's literally just a hunk of pork, two pounds. You could scale this recipe down. I just wanted to have leftovers. But essentially, you're gonna take each pork and. Beat the shit out of it. Kind of looks like it's falling apart, which is good. It's not actually good. I don't want it to fall apart. And I think once you get it to, you know, roughly that thickness, it'll be nice and good to go. Actually, it's not good to go. You still gotta like season it, and you won't have to beat your meat anymore. In your hot pan, we're gonna heat up some sesame oil. You can tell it's hot because it's almost smoking it instant. Then we're gonna throw in those vegetables. Oh my! This helps flavor the oil. Uh, now I need to scoop them out. How am I gonna do that? Just use your hands. <laughs> we might put these back in at the end for a little more crisp flavor. Okay, that seems like fine about. And now we gotta do the pork. So I don't have that much starch. That's kind of unfortunate. We're gonna salt the pork and then starch the pork. We put a little starch on it on a bowl and uh, give it a rub. Rub it up, dub. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, do your best. Oh, I'm gonna run out of starch so quickly. And plop it in. I think I'll be able to cook three chops at once. I'm making a huge mess. <laughs> Just FYI. Okay, I'm gonna put some of the sauce on the pork. Well, I'm gonna flip them over and do that. And that could be pyrotechnics. Got some nice browning. Okay, here we go. Some sauce. I'm gonna put a lid on it. Give it a little shake and shake. The shaking helps the sauce get under it. So I, I got the, the nice brown on that side of the pork, and then it's almost kind of like cooking the, the teriyaki steam as well, which will make for a nice flavor. Just gonna let that sit for a, a moment. Maybe ventilate the area a bit. Got a little, little steamy. Okay, got our rice which we're just gonna put into the bottom of the bowl. You might want to let this be more room temperature if you're gonna put veggies on it. But, you know, who are we to question? I think that pork's pretty much done. You can see it came out real nice. Some of the sauce is starting to burn. You can deglaze this with uh, some sake, for instance. I'm gonna cook more pork in it, so I'm just gonna let it keep burning. Grab a chop. Use a little bit of lettuce. This is so weird to me. <laughs> it's so weird. Actually, I am gonna deglaze real quick. Well, that was fun. Ooh. I really need to get more oil in there. It'll make the rest of the pork taste real nice. Or burnt. Okay, and your nice pork. I'm gonna cut into bite-sized pieces. Try to maintain the structure of the pork. Just like don't don't let it fly around willy-nilly. Pigs flying and all that. Okay, carefully transfer, more carefully than I did. And garnish with some tomatoes. It almost looks like a salad. But there's rice in there. You can top with some of those sauteed onions and garlic, which might be a little underdone, but I don't really care. And of course, just for a variety, we'll have some uncooked ones too. Isn't that pretty? It is pretty. Let's give it a try. Piece of pork. One for the dogs. Mmm, yeah, that's really good. I'm gonna try to eat some lettuce and rice. Why is there lettuce in this? I don't get the lettuce. Mmm. This is really good. That pork's really yummy. Man, it's really easy to dump that sauce in there. Mm, 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 mm. Oh guys, that's how you do it. That's a quick and easy dinner, I'd say. Probably make more things like that. Oh, well, he knows. Look, it, it's pork. Say thank you, Iggy. Bye, guys. <laughs>